The U.S. Library of Congress holds over 147 million items, and more than 22,000 new ones arrive every day. Recently, a small sampling of the library's treasures stopped in Monument Square, and Brian Knobloch talked with docent Abigail von Gelder about all the library has to offer. Abigail, we're in a great big truck here on Monument Square with a lot of things in it. Let's give us a little preview. Sure. Well, you're, we are standing inside of the Gateway to Knowledge Traveling Exhibit from the Library of Congress, and, and it is. It's housed inside of a great big truck, a, a custom-built, actually. Um, it's a double-expanding semi that allows us to have a 1,000 square feet in here. And we're using that 1,000 square feet to introduce people or reintroduce them to what the Library of Congress is and some of the amazing resources that are available there. And we do that by introducing people through a series of displays. Uh, when you first walk up the steps and into the trailer, uh, which you're transformed into a building, uh, we try to make this more of a museum feeling. The first uh, display that you interact with is actually uh, one that covers the history of the Library of Congress uh, and how it works on a daily basis uh, in its more modern keepings. Um, our next section, which is uh, a wonderful section, talks about Thomas Jefferson's amazing influence in the early library and his influence on it still to this day. The rest of the displays are all about the treasures at the Library of Congress. Now, there are more than 145 million items in the collection, and I can't talk about them all in here, but we certainly try to give people uh, a much deeper look into how diverse the collections are. You get thousands of items a day into the library, uh, and a lot of them end up being held for permanent collection. Let's talk about that process a little bit. Um, well, we always uh, have been told uh, it, it's, it's a very complicated and, and in-depth process, but how items are added to the collection, uh, of the 22,000 they receive every day, they add about 10,000. And each of those items uh, is unique and somehow important to studying American culture. Now, I can't tell you what that would eliminate or include. It's quite broad. Um, but it's exciting to think that they're always trying to expand the collections on, on multiple levels. The Library of Congress is home to the Copyright Office, and that's really one of the ways we gain access to so many amazing materials. And do you really know where everything is? <laughs> we do know where everything is. Um, now, there's some interactive components here as well. There's, there, are, there, are, there are screens that people can watch videos on and uh, laptops that they can access the internet. Let's talk about that a little bit. Sure. We have an exciting opportunity not only for to use our graphic displays to let people get very up close to the items, <laughs> as you could call them. We also have uh, a number of videos, including ones that we've borrowed from the Library of Congress's uh, Welcome Center. Had an exciting opportunity to take a little piece of the Jefferson Building and, and bring it right here. Uh, along with us, as well as videos that, that get in-depth with some of our collections. We talk about the Gutenberg Bible in one of those videos. Another one features clips from uh, some of America's earliest films. Uh, and of course, the video that some of our younger visitors love is where we really talk about the original drawings of Spider-Man. Yeah, you have uh, interesting displays here. You have uh, Walt Whitman to Jelly Roll Morton to Spider-Man. That's quite a wide variety. Does that reflect the variety in the collection itself? Uh, it absolutely does. I always say there's something in here for everyone because at the Library of Congress there is something for everyone. Whether you have a, a deep passion for music or literature or you're a history buff or you just have some interest in genealogy, you're going to discover so many amazing resources at the Library of Congress. Uh, with what we've chosen to feature inside the trailer um, are hopefully giving people an insight into the diversity of the collections. We've chosen items that reflect the different types of collections at the library, whether that be comic books, that be presidential papers, or uh, other amazing things uh, like the Gutenberg Bible. Um, there really is such a deep diversity to what the library has available. Now, how do people use the library? Is it used mainly for people research or people who are just curious about looking at something? What's the mix of that? Sure. There are so many ways to use the library. Of course, you yourself can plan a visit to the Library of Congress buildings, uh, especially the Jefferson Building, and go in and experience the exhibitry that they have set up. Or you can take the time and get a reading card and access the reading room there at the Library of Congress. But you can access the Library of Congress 24 hours a day right from your own couch at loc.gov. 
There are more than 20 million digitized items available on the website, and that's just the tip of the iceberg for the resources that are available there. So what's your favorite item in the library? <laughs> uh, my favorite item that we, uh, we talk about inside the exhibit is actually our display that talks about Thomas Jefferson's rough draft of the Declaration of Independence. What I think is so special about this display is not only is this an amazing piece in the collection, it's an amazing piece of history, but we also talk about the science and research that goes on at the library and how important it is that we use the items in co the collection to discover more. So where do people go? What's the website? What's the phone number? Where do they go to get infor <laughs> more information and look at all this great stuff? You know, we, I encourage everyone to come down and visit us on Capitol Hill at the Jefferson Building or log on to loc.gov 24 hours a day.